this video I'm going to I'm going to address uh, some examples of indefinite integrals and I'm also going to address some rules and uh, we have I'm going to just cover three basic rules for right now and I'll introduce the others with definite integrals since uh, since they behave more towards the line limits okay so this first one here says a power rule now this kind of is the the uh, reverse of the power rule for derivatives and so if we have the integral of x to the p where p is some value uh, that allows uh, x to be polynomial and so uh, dx this is equal to x to the p plus 1 divided by p plus 1 plus c so long as p is not equal to negative 1 okay so we so for this case cuz if p is equal to negative 1 i'll just tell you this right now you, you end up dealing with natural logs and that's something we'll cover in a different uh, a different video but you just so that you're not wondering like oh my god what 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 means if it happens to negative one well, well we'll get to it don't worry we'll get to it so long as p is not negative one it, it's treated effectively like the reverse of the power rule for derivatives for this next one the sum of the difference is basically the same as the derivatives and limits if you take the integral of two functions that are being added or subtracted within the integral you can then break it up and so this becomes the integral of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x dx okay oh, plus or minus and so you just take the summer difference and that's fine and, and life is dandy constants you can bring out of it of the integration just like you could for derivatives and so if you have the integral of some constant time your, your function dx then you can go ahead and bring that constant out and then just simply take the derivative of the function or take the integral of the function I apologize okay and so you have the power rule which simply says you increase the power on the on the polynomial and then divide by whatever that new that new uh, uh, that new exponent is add C always to the end of it because you're always adding, you always have that constant in there, constant, called the constant of integration. Uh, sum of difference, if you have the sum of difference of functions within the integral, you can split the integrals into the sums and differences. Uh, the constant, you can bring out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a couple, look at a couple of examples using these rules. So first one is, I'm just going to do an example of each, each rule just simply. And so if we take a look at, exa uh, take a look at example number one, dealing with the power rule, Let's go ahead and take a look at the integral of x to the third dx. Well, according to this, if we integrate uh, x to the third, we are going to increase our power to 4 and then divide by that new power and then add c. Okay, and you may see some books will we'll write this as 1 fourth x to the 4 plus c. That's fine. It doesn't matter which way you write it. Uh, by now you should be very comfortable with working with fractions okay and so that's just following that simple rule for the second one let's take a look at something like this if we integrate x squared plus 3x oops I don't want to put that in there yet we, we're not going to combine anything quite yet and that's dx well what I can do is then I can integrate over x squared dx plus I can integrate x dx now the first one is going to give me I have to use my power rule but the first one's going to give me x cubed divided by 3 and then plus the integral of x is going to be x squared divided by 2 plus c always with the plus c on the end okay so the third one is that constant. So let's just take a quick example of that. 
if we integrate, say, and I'll give you, uh, I'll show you both ways of doing it. It shows you it's the same way, really, as an example. Uh, if, if I say 3x squared dx, well, if we just use our, um, if we keep the constant inside, so I'll do this one in purple just to kind of separate it. If we keep the constant inside, we have 3 times, and then this is going to be x to the third divided by 3. Well, that just simply means that it's going to be the threes will cancel and it's just x to the third. So now, if I went ahead and brought the constant out, then I can say this is going to be 3 times the integral of x squared dx, which is equal to 3 times x cubed over 3. Those cancel out and I'm left with x cubed. And now you might say, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? If, if it's so easy to integrate, why would I bother to remove the constant? And that's a good question. Why would you? Well, we'll see in a few videos later that when we use a technique called substitution, we're going to have to multiply and divide by the same number so that we don't change the value of the function. When we do that, we're actually going to put a constant in the integral and take it right back out on the outside kind of like what you would do for fractions. You're going to multiply something and divide it all at the same time. Okay, and so it, it, we use this technique a lot. And I, it's very, very, very good to get used to these three items. All right, so let's go ahead and stop here for that. My next video is going to cover something like trig and more complex.